Hi, this is Dr. Villanueva, Chief Health Coach with Modern Holistic Health. Today we are going to be discussing leaky brain and the relationship between gut function and mental health conditions. The gut brain access actually does have a bi directional influence. Many people are familiar with how the gut can affect the brain function, but there are many of us who are not familiar with how our brain can actually affect our gut function. The brain and the gut are intricately connected. There is an established connection between the gut and the brain. The gut bacteria, while they do regulate mood, memory, happiness, and they help to actually make certain neurotransmitters. They help regulate our immune system, our hormones, our carbohydrate and sugar metabolism, and our adrenals and so many more functions. Our thoughts and our, um, um, you know, our thoughts that we have can actually influence our gut function and I'll also our um, our immune function and our genetic expression as well. And it's critical to understand this bi-directional influence when we are investigating mental health and other brain related problems. So when we're looking at this bi-directional influence, we want to take a look at it kind of in a flow chart. So as you can see here with this little uh, flow chart that I put together, if we have gut dysbiosis or any type of imbalance to the microbiome or the ecosystem of the gut, combined with any previous history of concussion, um, that can really amplify the effects of mental health dysfunction. So for example, if we have any type of gut dysbiosis that is caused from either experiences through, uh, through traumas, thoughts, or stress, uh, Prozac or other different prescription medications like antibiotics, for example, um, there are many different uh, prescription medications, including the medications that are oftentimes used for psychiatric issues that can really cause a huge imbalance in the gut. Um, and ironically, actually, there are some studies out there that show that certain psychiatric medications like Prozac actually inhibit the production of serotonin in the gut. Um, then we've got environmental toxins. You've got children that were, uh, if they were born uh, from C-section, they're not going to have the uh, normal healthy bacteria so that they can have a healthy gut biome and that can also cause a gut dysbiosis and then infections. So these are just some of the examples of very common uh, um, precursors that can cause gut dysbiosis or imbalance of the microbiome. And then when we combine that with any type of concussion, and concussions don't have to be a huge trauma like the, what you might think of as a traumatic brain injury or a TBI. You know, you could have played soccer as a kid. You could have been, you know, uh, bonked on the head as a kid, you know, where you run into another kid. We see that happen all the time. Um, even small car accidents can actually cause concussions. Really, it, I would be very surprised if any human can come away from a lifetime without having had at least one small concussion. But when we have that, it disrupts the blood brain barrier and actually causes what we know of as leaky brain. And I'm going to show you a, a depiction of that in just a minute. And you can see how the blood brain barrier looks almost identical to the gut barrier. Um, so um, uh, we also can have an added inflammatory effect when we have leaky brain. It will also affect our mitochondrial function. It will cause a glutamate release, uh, which is very excitatory to the brain and can cause people to feel uh, more anxiety and have sleep problems and so forth. And it can allow for infections and toxins to flow into the brain, which can further exacerbate um, uh, different mental health conditions. And so when we take 
a gut dysbiosis or microbiome uh, imbalance combined with leaky brain uh, from any previous concussions that we may have had, that is what can really contribute to various mental health dysfunctions like bipolar, depression, anxiety, autism, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, and many more. And here is a depiction uh, on the left, you can see the, uh, the gut barrier, and on the right, you can see a depiction of the blood-brain barrier. So you can see the similarity between the two and how if the barrier is broken, how, um, how you can have uh, um, um, the tight junctions will open up and allow for bacteria or other foreign substances to, uh, in the case of the of the gut barrier, they will enter the bloodstream, and in the case of the blood brain barrier, these foreign uh, substances can actually enter into the brain and start to cause problems. And I want to touch for just a few minutes on why medications don't work, and why we like to use data driven systems, and why many many uh, practitioners like myself are working very diligently to help change the face of mental health uh, so that we can actually give people hope and, and, and help them find resolutions to their problems. When we give medications like Wellbutrin, Prozac, Lamictal, Zoloft, and so forth, we oftentimes will find that these medications don't work. Many people have been wondering for many years why they don't work. Well, this shotgun approach of just, you know, like throwing the medication against the wall and seeing if it sticks kind of an approach or throwing it against the, the dartboard to see if it works. We've, we've realized that the reason why it doesn't work is because it's not addressing the underlying problem. In fact, I'm going to give you an example of why sometimes the, the medications can actually make people worse. When we do testing on individuals to look for underlying causes, we sometimes will find underlying infections. And when we see that, one of the biomarkers that we can look at is called HPAPA, and that is what we look at on organic acids testing. When we see elevated levels of HPAPA, for example, these uh, are indicators of infections. And there are many infections that will cause an issue with an increase in dopamine. And the reason why that's happening is because it is breaking down or inhibiting and the enzyme that is necessary so that dopamine can then convert into the other neurotransmitters that it needs to convert to, which is namely uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine. And if you mm -hmm. have these infections, which typically show as elevated levels of HPAPA on organic acids testing, uh, you will end up with very high dopamine levels, which can increase anxiety in an extreme way. And if you have a, any other factors that also might be contributing, like a double COMPT mutation or a homozygous COMT COMPT mutation um, in your gene that is responsible for breaking down dopamine, that can make a person feel even worse when they're on the medications. And so we oftentimes will see, uh, or we have seen rather, a huge epidemic of benzodiazepine dependence, for example, because people will get on their medications and they think that the dose isn't high enough or sometimes their doctor will think that the dose isn't high enough. So they keep increasing the dose and increasing the dose when in fact it's not even touching what the underlying cause of the chemistry imbalance and the person's symptoms are. And this is why, again, we like to use evidence-based approaches so that we can address the root causes. So this is a slide showing, uh, you know, just a good depiction of evidence-based therapy that is addressing root causes. If we can do lab testing to figure out what the underlying causes are, and oftentimes there is more than just one underlying cause. A person could have infections, plus they could have leaky brain, plus they could have some autoimmune issues, Plus, they could have some genetic issues, which are all addressable, by the way. Um, they could also have environmental factors like environmental toxin exposure in their foods or in their household products. 
they might also have uh, some emotional traumas that they you know, haven't effectively dealt with before. All of these things together can create a perfect storm and can really uh, uh, not only affect the brain directly, but will affect the brain indirectly by causing massive shifts in the, in the microbiome of the gut. And so by using evidence-based approaches, we can then use evidence-based therapies to address the root causes. So we can go in and we can address diet, exercise, mood, uh, stress, uh, we can uh, we can address environmental factors and underlying infections so that we can restore uh, normal balance to the gut microbiome, for example, and restore normal normal balance and restore the blood brain barrier so that then we can have the proper bacterial growth and the the uh, proper immune resistance and be able to uptake the nutrients that we need so that we can make all of the neurotransmitters and break all of the neurotransmitters down that, so that we can have balance in our brain and actually be able to restore proper cognitive function. The uh, data-driven model that we like to use uh, starts with, you know, we, we need to take a look at at why the central nervous system or, or enteric nervous system isn't working properly that is affecting the brain function. Then, as you can see in my flow chart here, the first things that we want to look at are, you know, what is the gut doing and, and what is the brain doing? And do we have a compromise in the barrier of the gut and the brain? In order to to understand what could create a compromise in these barriers, again, we need to look at infections, environmental toxins, medications, lifestyle, and genetics. And I want to show you here a study of how the impact of gut bacteria actually had a significant uh, improvement with patients that experience psychosis. In fact, um, in this particular study, 70% of patients with restored normal gut bacteria showed remission after 12 months of, of probiotic therapy versus 28% of patients with abnormal gut microbiota. Um, and here is another study showing how the uh, the symptom of anxiety was actually reduced significantly by regulating the gut microbiome. In fact, over 50% of the studies concluded that regulating the gut microbiome reduced anxiety. And here's the third one showing the reduction of mood disorders like anxiety and depression with probiotic consumption and restoration of the gut microbiome. So we actually have millions of friends that we didn't even know we had. And these millions of friends are in the form of many different bacteria that not only live in our gut, but they live um, um, in, on our skin as well. And these, these gut uh, bacteria that we actually have are responsible, as I had mentioned before, for producing uh, uh, many of the chemicals that we need in our body to have not only proper brain function, but proper immune function as well. So I've listed out some of the different chemicals that these bacteria are responsible for making, including serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, dopamine, estrogen, progesterone. Um, they are responsible for regulating our metabolism, immune function, and our pituitary and adrenal glands as well. The microbiome is uh, not only affected by infections and genetics, as I had mentioned earlier, but I really want to touch for a few minutes on how our microbiome and our brain function is, is, is affected by our experiences and our emotions. So when we have experiences that 
lead to emotion, that actually directly affects our gut microbiome, believe it or not. And in turn, the, the bacteria that are experiencing change because of our emotions and our thoughts, they turn around and then they send chemical signals, including neurotransmitters that are affecting our memory and our emotions and our behavior in, in our brain. These gut, micro, these gut um, uh, microbes even alter our gene expression. And so that's very, very important to understand the intricate connection. And I've got a diagram here that shows the connection between the gut and the brain. And there were even some recent studies um, when I got back from a conference recently that were showing how the vagus nerve that connects the gut and the brain um, can actually um, be affected or can actually transfer infections and bacteria from the gut into the brain. Uh, and if you have leaky brain, then the bacteria that are transferring via the vagus nerve can actually permeate through the blood brain barrier and get into the brain, causing a lot of changes in our brain chemistry. So what do we do about these uh, uh, gut brain issues and, and what do we do about leaky brain and leaky gut and how can we get ourselves better from our chronic health issues, namely our mental health issues that we have? Well, first of all, let's remember that it's not a mental health problem. It's a brain health problem. It's a gut health problem. It's a health of your overall body and brain problem. And by using data-driven solutions, including what we have put together as a comprehensive approach that addresses biological, genetic, environmental, and emotional influences on mental health. We can actually, and we are actually seeing massive changes and transformations in people's lives. So get to the, you know, get to the root cause, get some testing done so that you can address, um, um, identify, and eliminate and correct the imbalances that you're finding in your brain, in your gut, in your entire body, which is going to include, you know, um, finding and eliminating the toxins and infections, restoring your gut and your brain barrier so that we can restore leaky brain and leaky gut issues. Only then can you replenish the nutrient deficiencies so that you can actually have adequate amounts of the nutrients that you need so that your body can heal and restore its normal brain chemistry and body chemistry. Breath work to activate your vagus nerve and breath work to help restore health to your body is actually paramount and it's not talked about enough. That is included in our uh, in, in, in many of our programs. And then adapting new lifestyles that are going to support and heal your body and to help you to maintain wellness. Look, if we don't make lifestyle changes, we're never going to get better. And so understanding how the lifestyle that you've been leading has contributed to your physical illness and your mental illness and making those changes so that you can not only heal but stay healthy for the rest of your life is so important. And we work hand in hand with our clients to help them make lifestyle changes. You know, some of us need more lifestyle changes than others. Some of us just need to make food changes. We already have the exercise down. We already have, have uh, made the lifestyle changes necessary to eliminate unneeded stress, whether it's getting rid of unhealthy toxic relationships or changing your career. And, and some of us haven't done that. And our team will work with our clients. We work with you guys all of the time to help you make those changes. And it's so important to understand if you don't make those changes, you're never going to get better. And then healing the emotional and subconscious traumas and stressors that we've had. You know, there are, there are many times when the traditional counseling model is very effective and can help. And then there are other times when we just honestly need more than what we're getting in the traditional counseling model. And if we don't address our subconscious uh, and, and, and spiritual side, and if we don't address patterns that we've developed and actually be able to rewire those patterns that we've developed 
due to stressful and traumatic events in our life, if we don't change that, then we're going to continuously be altering our genetic expression and altering our physiology or our biochemistry. And we're going to be fighting an uphill battle for the rest of our lives. And so utilizing the comprehensive approach like what we have here at Modern Holistic Health is actually giving people the best shot of actually having transformation in their health and in their life. And then finally, be patient. It can take years to develop these symptoms of chronic health issues and mental health issues. And it's going to take time to restore your body so that your body can take care of you. Your body has been trying to take care of you for years. And now it's time for you to take care of your body and your mind and your spirit. And as you could see in some of the studies that I showed you today, the changes that people had in, in some of these uh, studies that were done, it took up to 12 months to make changes. And that's why our programs, especially when we're dealing with any type of brain health issue, are 12 months long because it takes time to get the body to heal. There are many, many components. And so just be patient with yourself and trust in the process. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video today and that you learned something new and I look forward to seeing you again next week.